Graphing linear equalities. This video will help you see the similarities between inequalities in one variable and two variables and graph linear inequalities. Graph linear inequalities. Let's start with a definition. A linear inequality in two variables is the same as a linear equation except we replace the equal sign with an inequality sign. The graph is a straight line and that straight line is either solid or dashed with one side of the line shaded. Okay, let's take a look at some examples to see what this looks like. So we'll start here. I have a linear inequality and this really is our standard form of a linear equation ax plus by equals some number c except I've replaced the equal sign now with an inequality sign. And so what happens when we replace an equal sign with an inequality sign is we get a lot more solutions to this. Very similar to one variable when we replace an equal sign with an inequality we got more solutions. Same things happen here in two variables. So if we take a look here I graph my line and here's the line. That line is solid because we have less than or equal to meaning this line is part of the solution set. So to indicate that we use a solid line and then anything on this left side of this line and that's what this green shading is all of this green shading indicates that all of these points over here to the left of this line are also solutions to this inequality. Let's Take a look at that next example. So the next example I kinda have this inequality written in slope intercept form. So I'm starting with slope intercept form except now I replace the equal sign with a less than sign. And so Here's the graph of this line, but you'll notice I've graphed this line dotted because with a less than symbol, it means that the line is not part of the solution set. So I've got a dashed line there indicating the line is not part of the solution set. And then I've shaded the right here indicating this is where all of the solutions are to this inequality. Final example. This is just a, a graph of y equals some number c, a horizontal line except I've replaced again the equal sign now with a greater than symbol. And so since it's strictly greater than it means the line is not part of the solution set. So I can see I've graphed a dashed line here indicating it's not part of the solution set. I've shaded everything above because this is all the places where y is going to be greater than negative 2. So any of these points up here are going to be a solution to this inequality. Now let's take a look at some of the similarities between inequalities in one variable and inequalities in two variables. We've already done inequalities in one variable and when we do inequalities in one variable we're really talking about one dimension here. Here I have a number line and a number line really has one dimension. It's going to the left and the right. And so remember when I graph the solution set here y is less than 4. I got lots of answers to this inequality. right? Any number that's smaller than or less than 4 is part of the solution set. So remember when I graphed an inequality like this, I would say, okay, I'm coming down here to 4. Now I want to graph an open circle. That open circle indicates that 4 is not part of the solution set. And now I want to draw a line wherever all of these solutions are going to occur, which is to the left of 4 where all these values are smaller. So I would draw a line like this. And all of these values to the left of 4 are, not, are going to be our solution set. Now, the open circle indicates that we're going to get as close as we can to 4 without actually touching 4 because if we had the statement 4 is less than 4 it wouldn't be true. But anything that's even just a tiny bit smaller than 4 is going to be part of our solution set. Now let's transition this idea over here to two dimensions where we have two variables. Okay, I've written an inequality statement here and this inequality statement here is really in slope intercept form. Really it's kind of mimicking this. y equals 3x minus 1. And so we could quickly find some points using slope intercept form here of this equation. So let's see, my y intercept was negative 1. I had a slope there of 3, which means the slope of 3 over 1. So that would mean y changes 3, up 1, 2, 3, x changes 1. y changes 3, 1, 2, 3, x changes 1. So here I have the place where I'm going to draw this line. But I want to indicate here, since this is a strictly less than symbol, that the line is not part of the solution set. So the way that I do that is I draw a dashed line. And its dashed line is not going to be very good with me writing with this pen, but you'll get the idea. Okay, so I have this dashed line there. 
that dashed line is the kind of two-dimensional equivalent of this open circle. You know, over here in one dimension, we wanted to show that 4 was not part of the solution set. If we have an inequality symbol here, we want to show that this line is not part of the solution set. The way that we communicate that is simply with a dashed line. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to figure out which side of this dashed line the solutions occur. Over here in one dimension, it was easy to see. We could look at this and go, oh yeah, anything smaller than 4 is going to be part of the solution set. Now in two dimensions, it's a little bit more complicated. So what we do is we take a test point on either side of this line. So I'll come over here to the right and we'll test this point right here. It doesn't matter which point I test as long as the point is not on the line. So I'm going to plug this point and the coordinates of that point are 2, 1. I'm going to plug that point now back into my inequality and see if it makes a true or false statement. So let's see. The y value there is 1, so I would have this statement. 1 is less than the x value was 2, 3 times 2 minus 1. Let's simplify this right side and see what kind of statement we have here. 3 times 2 is 6, and then 6 minus 1 is 5. So here, when I plug that point in, here's the inequality statement I get. 1 is less than 5. That is a true statement. 1 is less than 5. What that tells me then is that this point right here is a solution to my inequality. What that also tells me then is that all of the points over here on this side are also a solution to my inequality. So I would want to shade this entire side to indicate that all of these points are part of the solution set. Had I tested this point 2, 1, plugged it in here, and gotten a false statement, that would have told me none of the points on the right side of this line are solutions, and I would have had to shade the left side. So really, you know, we could check a point on the right side and also check a point on the left side, but it's not necessary because really it's kind of a 50-50 chance, right? If the solutions are on the right, they're not going to be on the left. If they're on the left, they're not going to be on the right. So we really just need to test one point here to figure out which side of the line to shade. Now it's time to check your understanding of graphing a linear inequality. Pause your video player and answer this practice question. Notice I've given you some pointers here if you need them tips on how we do this. Go ahead and pause your video player and work this problem. When you get done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, question one. We're asked to graph this linear inequality. Y is greater than or equal to 1 fourth X minus 2. And so hopefully you recognize that this really is in the form, this is in slope intercept form, 1 fourth X minus 2. That's what it would look like as an equation. And this is what we're going to use to find our points. And that's what I've written right here on our first, our first bullet. Find points on the boundary line as if you have an equal sign. So here we are having an equal sign. We're going to need to graph this equation, or at least graph some points of this equation. So let's see, our uh, y-intercept of negative 2. Slope of 1 fourth means up 1 in the y direction over 4 in the x direction. So there are my two points. I'm ready to graph my line. Now let's check to see if this line has to be solid or dotted. Since it's greater than or equal to, the line is going to be part of the solution set. So I communicate that with a solid line. Okay. So I've graphed my solid line now. That was kind of bullet two. Now I'm going to test a point that's not on the boundary line to see which side the solutions are going to fall. They're either going to be above this line or below this line. So let me choose a test point. I think 0, 0 is a really easy point to test. And 0, 0 is not on the line. So let's go ahead and plug this point 0, 0 into my inequality and see if I get a true or a false statement. Let's see. So I would have this statement then. If I bring this over and plug 0, 0 in, I would have 0 is greater than or equal to 1 fourth times 0 minus 2. Well, it's really nice. Again, 0, everything drops out, right? This 1 fourth times 0 is 0. So I get this statement. 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Is 0 larger than or equal to negative 2? Yeah, that is bigger than negative 2. So that's a true statement. That tells me all of the solutions are going to come on the top side of this equation. All right, let's practice another one. Go ahead and pause your video player and answer practice question 2. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. 
question two. We're asked to graph this linear inequality, y is less than 3x plus 1. And so hopefully you recognize that is in slope-intercept form. So the first thing we want to do is graph this line, the boundary line, or find points on the boundary line as if we have an equal sign there. So let's see, it has a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of 3. Up 1, 2, 3, over 1. Okay, now we need to figure out whether we're graphing a dotted or solid line. And since we have a strictly less than, that means the line is not part of our solution set. So we want to graph this line dotted. Okay, now I just need to figure out which side to shade. So let's use a test point. It looks like 0, 0 is not on the boundary line. So as long as 0, 0 is not on the boundary line, that's always an excellent choice. So we're going to test this point 0, 0 and find out what happens. So plugging 0, 0 into our original inequality, we'd have this. You know, Taking our original inequality, plugging 0 into it, I'd have 0 is less than 3 times 0 plus 1. Okay, simplify this. 0 is less than 1. That's true. 0 is a smaller number than 1. So this point gave us a true statement, which indicates then all of the points on the right side of this line are going to be part of the solution set. So we would want to shade the right side of that dotted line. All right, pause your video player and practice again. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, question three, we're asked to graph this linear inequality. Y is less than or equal to 1 half X plus two. And again, we're in slope intercept form here. So we first thing we want to do is find some points as if we had an equal sign there. So let's see a y intercept of two. A slope of one half means y changes one, x changes positive two. So there are my points. Uh, it's less than or equal to. So I want to graph a line here, a solid line, to show that this line is part of the solution set. Now let's figure out which side to shade. And again, looks like 0, 0 is not on that line. So let's go ahead and test our point 0, 0. Now, don't always get in the habit of testing 0, 0 and think that that's the only point to test. Sometimes it had this equation going through 0, 0, we wouldn't be allowed to do it. But if it's not on the line, go ahead and use it. So again, we'll take this inequality and plug it in. So then I'll have 0 is less than or equal to 1 half times 0 plus 2. So then I end up with this statement, 0 is less than or equal to 2. That is a true statement, 0 is smaller than or equal to 2, so that tells me that all of my solutions are going to be below this line. All right, let's practice another one. Go ahead and pause your video player and graph this linear inequality. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, so question four, we're asked to graph the linear inequality 2x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 6. Now this one is not in slope-intercept form. So you could have spent some time and converted into slope-intercept form, but when it's in this standard form like this, I usually find that it's easier just to find my intercepts, my x and y intercept. And remember those occur when the other value is 0. For example, the x-intercept will occur when y is 0. The y-intercept will occur when x is 0. So let's go ahead and plug those values in, and this will give me two points. And I think that's probably the easiest way to do this equation. So let's see, starting with our first point here, we're going to plug a 0 in for y. So then I'd be left with this statement, 2x minus 3 times 0. And again, we want to look at equality here, so I would put an equal sign in there. This term, this, three, this negative 3 times 0, is going to drop out. And I'm going to be left with this 2x equals 6. And you can see there that x would have to be 3 to make that a true statement. Now I'll plug a 0 in for x. So I'd have 2 times 0 minus 3y equals 6. Okay, And again, the 2 times 0 is going to drop out. And so you can look at that and say negative 3 times what would give us a positive 6. Well, that's negative 2. If you couldn't see that, divide both sides by negative 3, and you get the same thing, that y equals negative 2. Okay. Now that I've got my points, 
let's see, my point is over 3, up 0. So there's 1. There's my x-intercept. My y-intercept is right here. Let me erase this here. This is scratch work. Okay, now I need to figure out whether this is going to be a dotted line or a solid line. Greater than or equal to. That means the line's part of the solution set, so we want to grab the solid line. Let's figure out which side to shade. Again, this test point zero, 00 is open, so let's use it. So let's see, I get the statement then. Let's come down here and put zero, 00 in there. So I'd have 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0 is greater than or equal to 6. Well, everything on the left side is going to drop out. So we're going to be left with a statement. 0 is greater than or equal to 6. Well, that is not a true statement. That tells me that this point, 0, 0, is not a solution. That also tells me that none of the points kind of above to the left of this line are going to be solutions. Well, by default, if the solutions aren't on the left or top of this line, that means all the solutions have to be on the other side. So I would shade everything down here as part of my solution set. Okay, I have one final practice problem for you here. Go ahead and pause your video player and answer practice question five. When you're done, hit play to see how you did. Okay, question five. Kind of the linear inequality that is associated with this would just be x equals negative two. And so x equals negative two is a vertical line where x is negative two. So we're getting these points right here. You know, all of these points here where x is negative 2. Now let's figure out, yep, it's going to be a solid line since it's greater than or equal to. That means it's going to be included. So I'm graphing a solid line. And now I need to figure out which side to shade. I could choose a test point. I could choose 0, 0 if I wanted to. But with these vertical lines or horizontal lines, it's really quite easy to figure this out. You know, where are the values? When there's only one variable involved, it's really easy to see where these values are going to be greater than negative 2. Where is x going to be greater than negative 2? Well, anything, you know, over here to the right of this line is where all my x values that are greater than negative 2 are going to fall. So I want to shade this right side. 